Hey guys, my name is Jose, aka Joe Engineer. Welcome again to another 9-11 repair video. And for today, uh, I will be showing you how to repair and uh, rebuild the windshield washer system on your Porsche 911, uh, specifically for model years 1974 through 1986. Uh, we will be doing this operation on my car, a 1983 Porsche 911 SC. And initially I wanted to only cover the replacement of the washer nozzles and the wiper blades. And that's it, just to cover the items that basically spray the fluid on your windshield and clean it off. But then I thought to myself, you know, just like my other videos where I like to go through an entire system and just fix it once and fix it right so that it's not a problem in the future anymore, I figured, you know, let's just go through the entire system and go through all the lines, clean out the tank, make sure there's no debris in the bottom of it that could clog the nozzles or, or other issues. So uh, bear with me. We'll be uh, covering all of this stuff in great detail. So this video might get a little bit long, but I hope it's very informative for you and that it helps you repair um, the washer system on your 911 as well. So let's get to it. Let's see how well my windshield washer squirters work. Wipers work fine. I can hear the windshield washer pump working, trying to squirt fluid but a tiny bit came out on the driver's side over here and that's it. And the windshield washer fluid tank is actually full. There's a nozzle here on this side and one on this side, just outside of the wiper um, arms. And only this one, come on, nope. That's as good as it's gonna get. Basically they don't work. So here's an overview of the washer system that we're gonna cover. The one on my car is a 1983 system. So it falls into this category, which applies from 1974 to 1986. And it's just a plain, just a plain old washer uh, system consisting of a couple of nozzles, the check valves, the lines, a pump, a tank, and that's it. Some of the, the earlier cars, 73, and earlier it had, I believe, had a similar system, but, but with uh, a different style of nozzle that um, has different, um, uh, slightly different mounting methods. So we're not gonna cover that one. The later cars, 87 through 89 uh, impact bumper series had a similar system. However, it has updated nozzles that also have a, it looks like they have a heating, heating element of some sort for um, to uh, I'm, I'm assuming to thaw these out or uh, you know for harsh winters and they also have something called an intensive washing system that has a separate tank that sits in the trunk and um, has this special fluid that super cleans your windshield somehow so um, yeah we're not going to cover that system we're going to go with this one 1974 through 1986. In order to get access to your washer nozzles, you want to go ahead and empty out your trunk. If you have carpet, remove the carpet. And then remove this cover that covers all the HVAC um, components underneath there using the uh, four bolts. One there, one there, and two more on the other side. And even though you can see the washer nozzle is over here, and same thing on that side, away from, from the cover, um, you wanna give yourself as many places to be able to stick your hands up in here because getting, getting to the washer nozzle and the, the tubing connected to it is a little bit cramped, so we wanna give ourselves as much space as possible. Step one of removing the washer nozzles 
in this case the passenger side one, is to remove the rubber tube connected to the bottom of the nozzle. So you can see the, the plastic locking tabs that are holding the, the, the plastic nozzle itself locked into place and there's the top of the rubber black rubber tube. You want to grab that tube and pull it straight off of the nozzle. Here I've um, reached in with the camera off unfortunately because there's no absolutely no room in this gap. I was able to reach in with my hand, grab the rubber hose, pull it off the nozzle and the nozzle is right there. Now what we're going to do is grab some needle nose pliers, squeeze those two tabs together and hopefully we can push up on the nozzle. Now we have to get that nozzle out somehow. So I've got a work light here because I don't have a third hand. If you attempt to use these, you probably won't uh, be too successful because it's way too far. And because these are straight, they kind of get in the way of your vision while you're trying to um, squeeze the lock tabs in. But if you go to Harbor Freight, or any hardware store and grab some of these long ones. If these are your standard ones, these are quite a bit longer. Um, and then they have the angled end as well. These were like three bucks um, at Harbor Freight. But I can get in here. I gotta get way in here. And then I can see the tabs grab them, start to work it upwards, and it popped up. If yours, if your nozzle is a little bit too tight, you can also use a trim tool with another hand. Shove it under the nozzle gasket and pry up, and now your nozzle is free. And now we can just pop in the new one and reconnect the hose right here. The bottom of the nozzle has has a, a rectangular body. If you look at right here where, I'm, where my finger's facing, that rectangular profile fits into here and the lock tabs fit into the one that goes across. So they go, they go like this. And then you snap it in. Didn't make any sound, but we'll check on the bottom to make sure the tabs are fully expanded. While you are in here replacing the nozzles, this is the perfect opportunity to also replace the check valves themselves. And the reason why you want to do this is that these check valves allow washer fluid to flow up through the nozzle and then close and don't allow air to get sucked back into the line because what happens is if these are defective, then after your pump has pushed the fluid all the way through the line and up onto your, uh, through the washer nozzle into the windshield, then what will happen is if the car sits for a long period of time, the, the fluid will tend to wanna uh, flow back down towards the pump due to gravity and it will suck in air to replace the uh, space inside the line. So the next time you want to use, use your washers, you're going to hit the, the, uh, the lever next to the steering wheel, and it's going to take forever for the pump to push the fluid through the entire line, again, all the way up to the nozzle. So these things stay closed, keep the fluid right here, so that next time you want to spray, the, uh, the fluid is right here. and goes right up um, onto the windshield immediately.
So great time to go ahead and replace these guys on, uh, on both sides um, as, as long as you're replacing the nozzles. So this is the line that goes behind all the AC stuff that connects from this nozzle to the other nozzle. Um, I need to replace it because it's very hard and um, I can't just trim it to put the new nozzles on because now the line is too short. So I want to run this new piece of line through here, through the back. Um, and my original intention was to unhook the hose on both sides tie a piece of string to it and then pull it out so the string comes through, tie the new line to the string and then pull the string around. However, the string fell off. So now we have the old line and the new line and no pathway to um, run the new line. So I'm going to try to use this uh, fish tape. Let's see if I can fish it from the back. This is a little bit dangerous because there's a bunch of gauge wiring and other dash wiring right behind there. You don't want to catch anything and pull it and mess up the wires. So I taped up the little, little hook on the end of it so it doesn't catch on anything. All I need this is to make a clear path to the other side. And then I could hopefully tape this new line to here and then gently pull it back out. So let's see if this works. try to keep it above all this stuff kind of right under the cowl if that makes sense there we go there it is I see it Let's tape, tape the new line. This is the end. This line has been cut longer than this one to give me more, you know, more slack. Um, and this is the check valve that goes on this side. So once I run it through, then I can replace the other check valve over there. And I hope this works. If, I were in, if you were in my position, I would try the piece of string first because it's less risky. Or maybe a, another piece of this stuff or a piece of rope um, or a piece of speaker wire, you know, something like that. Because it's a little scary, um, disturbing, or yanking out any of the wiring behind here. So that's a big, big, big risk. But, um, I'm going to do this very carefully and not pull too hard. Okay, here we go. It's a lot of tape. All right. Here goes nothing.
Nothing is snagging. Nice and smooth. So far so good. All right, we've got the tape and the land of the line over here and the check valve is over there. So now we want to carefully release this tape. There it is. All right. Now we can run it under here where it was before. Connect this side and hook up that and put the new um, new check valve over here too. And then we're done. So now our nozzle is in. We'll do a quick, quick check. Make sure the tabs are actually in there. I'm gonna to try to push it up with my finger, and no, it's actually in there. It's it's the tabs are expanded, so now it's not gonna go anywhere. And now I can just reach in here, grab the rubber hose, and while you stare at the back of my head, I can put this back on. Now let's try to go do the other side now. Also, one last thought. The best part about this whole repair is that if you have the right tool to get in here and extract the nozzle, you don't have to mess with potentially tearing or damaging these nearly 40 year old paper and aluminum uh, hoses um, and just generally kind of going crazy disassembling stuff and putting it all back together. There's a lot of tightly packed stuff in here that you don't really want to mess with. Let's see. I'm going to grab the plastic T fitting, put the rubber hose back on just so I don't lose it. And it's a fairly a nice tight fit yeah so I think this should be okay all right that's on there now let's try to remove the old nozzle itself with our our friends the long nose pliers here so all right, it's really tough to get in there. I'm, I'm really, really close, but I can't. I need to lower the pliers in the space that this plastic accordion hose is. Fortunately, it looks pretty easy to access. There is a hose clamp down here and one up here, and this is plastic. It's not the one of these uh, more delicate uh, paper ones. So we're gonna take this guy off. Here's another view of this plastic accordion hose. There's a hose clamp right there that I can get to with a flat screwdriver and another hose clamp up here. And then I should be able to pull this guy out. If, like in my case, uh, this screw is being blocked by this little cross member here or support, you can take this guy off. There is a screw up, bolt up here and a bolt down there so you can take that guy off in order to get to the hose clamp if necessary
Okay, two bolts. This guy comes out. This washer's stuck here. I repainted this one, so I guess it must have got stuck in the fresh paint. But anyway, you should run into that issue. But now I have a clear, clear path to this hose clamp. Loose. I can do the bottom one. Fingers crossed so we don't break anything. There we go. Now it's free. Remember which side goes up and which side goes down. Um, it's sort of, I mean, it's sort of bent, pre-bent in a particular way, but um, yeah, just keep an eye on that. Okay. Now back where we were. Getting back to the nozzle. Now I have, oh yeah, way more clearance. See if I can operate the pliers with my left hand. If you're a lefty, you have an advantage here. So let me walk you through a summary of the removal process on the driver's side. After you remove the accordion hose, I ended up having to use several, um, actually two different kinds of needle nose pliers. Still on this side, these are too short. These worked for initially grabbing a hold of the nozzle and squeezing the tabs the very first time and then getting a trim tool up here shoved under the nozzle and uh, I was able to loosen it up just a tiny bit. You could see that the gasket was sitting above the surface of the of the paint. So it was kind of a partial loosening like this. Then, I had to go back, grab my pliers again, reach in and grab the locking tabs, but at this point, in order to get enough leverage to squeeze them shut, um, I was running into the these blue hoses on the back of the master cylinder. Um, the pliers ended up being too, too long for the final uh, removal, so I switched to this intermediate size of pliers right here that are straight and I'll show you the final lengths of all the tools at the end of the video. With these I was able to get in, grab, grab the locking tabs. I was able to grab the locking tabs, not have the uh, master cylinder hoses, the blue hoses, be in the way. Um, was able to grab them and then with my other hand come back over here and with a forked end of a trim tool get under here work it back and forth and then eventually pop it off so this side was a little more complicated than the uh, passenger side due to clearances but it is possible to do it After the home stretch, grab the driver's side nozzle, pop it back in, okay, it's in there, try to push it out with your other hand just to verify that it's locked in place, in which case it is. Now grab the rubber hose on the T-fitting and pop it. Reconnect it to the bottom of the nozzle. 
you could probably do this by feel, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at it on my side. Okay, now it's on nice and tight, give it a good push. Make sure both ends of the rubber hose are connected to the T-fitting and the nozzle. And then before you reconnect everything, all right, good, that's, that's all good. Now, actually I'm gonna reconnect my fluid reservoir overflow hose here. Now you should be able to test it out before you um, reconnect the bolt on the cross member and the cover that goes here. Well, actually, before you put on the accordion hose and all the other stuff that goes in here. All right, let's give these guys a test run. <laughs> Getting the interior wet. There's the driver's side. There is the passenger side. <laughs> so they work. After running the washers, do a quick leak check. Just kind of feel around and make sure you're not leaking anywhere. Let's try over here. Try over here too. Yep, no issues. So now we can reconnect all of our stuff. Accordion hose goes in first. Before you connect those fittings, or the um, hose clamps rather, put this guy back on and make sure that uh, you're not blocking the fittings or the hose clamps rather, so that next time you don't have to remove this guy should you need to get back in here. So, let's put those in there. And Now, we connect them so that you have access to them for next time. Snug tight, not too tight. There. Good to go. Do the same on the bottom one. probably can't see it from that view but um, as you can tell I have a straight shot so it's not tight now that's good this is on now we can reconnect the panel here with the four bolts
Oh, wait, wrong one. All right, now just put the carpet back in and you're done. Now, let's say you wanted to come back and replace some of these other hoses. The rest of them seem to be pretty accessible. So let's talk through that briefly. Over here under the driver's side, you can see this hose coming out from under the driver's side nozzle. So it comes back this way and it's actually this goes over here. This bluish one has washer fluid in it. That's why it's blue. Comes over here and then it disappears under the under the fuse box. Now this other hose that looks very similar to it is not a washer fluid hose. This one connects to this piece of uh, cloth braided tube which goes around the the hood hinge and um, gas strut and is actually a piece of hose that connects over here to your master cylinder overflow tube. So what happens here is if you if your master cylinder is overflowed, if you if you put too much fluid in here and it overflows, the excess fluid goes through the tube through this plastic tube and actually disappears down into the, the front right wheel well and dumps outside. So that's where your fluid goes if you ever uh, run into that situation. The washer fluid hose goes under here, under the fuse panel, comes back over here in front of the battery, and then drops down over here to the front corner of the trunk or frunk and you can see this is the line coming from the washer nozzles it goes here then it goes into into a T fitting and one end of the T fitting goes to the pump over here now, where does the other side of the T-fitting go? T-fitting goes back over here to this front grommet. So I think this is the pressure side of the pump and any excess fluid that isn't routed to the nozzles goes back here and dumps back into the tank, which makes this side the suction side. So when the pump is running, fluid is drawn into this hose, which goes down to this side of the pump. Suction side, pressure side, with the T-fitting and the return line back to the tank. So these are all fairly easy to access. So if you have, if you have any leaks or see any issues, it should be very easy to um, replace these uh, as they're fairly accessible. One final detail under here. This is the passenger side nozzle. And if you look underneath, there is the nozzle, or the hose rather. Can't get the nozzle on the shot, but there's the hose, there's the angle fitting, which is a check valve, and then there's the sort of amber colored old um, rubber tube. Um, make sure anywhere you are routing any of the hoses that they don't sit on any sharp edges. Here I had to put a piece of foam tape that I usually use for, I, I usually just keep kind of sheets and rolls of this stuff around and I like to use it for um, uh, putting it in between door panels and metal door skins to fix any rattles or squeaks or things like that but I had to use some of this foam tape 
to stick over a sharp metal flange. You can see it right above the foam tape there. And the washer hose sits directly on top of that flange. So with ro road vibration, that would eventually become a leak. And I don't really feel like leaking fluid all over my electrical uh, components under here in the instrument panel. So anytime you see a sharp edge, grab a piece of foam tape or uh, you know, do something to cushion it and protect it from the sharp edge or use grommets or uh, um, anything like that. As long as you have your nozzles done, you may as well replace your wiper blades so that the entire system will clean the windshield properly. Um, this is very difficult to see here because you have a black car, black wipers, and black everything uh, in a fairly dark garage. So I'm just going to explain it to you verbally as much as I can. So in order to get the old wiper off in the closed position, grab the tab closest to you or furthest away from the wiper arm. Pull it out and push down and then it should unlock and, and come off of the arm. Now you can grab the new wiper arm and pop it on the same way that it came off. Kind of insert it in here put the locking tab in the same orientation as the old one and then just pull them until it stops. It doesn't really give you a, a click, but it does, you can feel when it stops. Be very careful so you don't bend the wiper arms or um, any of the mechanism pieces, but that's about it. And you're done. Do the same thing on the other side and you're done. Here are the tools that we use for this repair, in case you need to pick some up yourself. These Long needle nose pliers, angled ones, are about 11 inches long to the tip. These medium sized ones are about 8.5 inches long. Remember we use these for the passenger side and these for the driver side. These little guys are no good for removing the nozzles but your standard uh, 6 inch six, six and a half inch uh, needle nose should work for doing the, uh, the wiper blades. And also very helpful to remove the nozzles are some of these forked plastic trim panel tools, preferably the flat one. But if you have uh, an angled one, that would work too.